Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in 1967, during the Vietnam War. During this period, the Bravo Company platoon scouts the forest near the Cambodian border. One of the members of the platoon is Chris Taylor, a recruit scouting among veterans. Taylor discovers the body of a Vietnamese soldier in the forest, during the search. He freezes, and is unwilling to proceed. Being a rookie, this is the first time he has seen an enemy's body so closely. However, Staff Sergeant Barnes moves in from behind him, and orders Chris to keep walking. Some time later, Lieutenant Wolf concludes the search, and informs the captain of their whereabouts. Taylor takes a seat and coughs loudly. Barnes stares at Taylor pityingly, and requests that Doc check on him. Doc and Sergeant Elias help him by removing his backpack, and informing him that he is carrying too much useless stuff. Later that night, Barnes Elias Wolf and Sergeant O'Neill consider ambushing the enemy. Barnes instructs Elias to prepare his squad for it, but Elias informs him that it is O'Neill's squad's turn to make the move. O'Neill reveals that the majority of his team will be on leave the next day. As a result, Elias has no choice, however, Barnes orders O'Neill to join the ambush as well. Following that, the ambush squad prepares for their operation. Gardner, another recruit talks with Taylor when Elias takes him with him, and Taylor is assigned to Texas unit. As the rain continues to fall until nightfall, the soldiers make their way into the bush. During the night ambush patrol, Tex ends his shift for Taylor's turn. Tex tells him how to use the claymores, in the event that enemy soldiers reach their position. Tex falls asleep, leaving Taylor to stay on guard for several hours. After Taylor's shift, it is Junior's turn to stay awake, but he fell asleep, instead of watching his post. Taylor awakens a few hours later, and discovers Junior asleep on his shift. With only him awake, he is hesitant to use the claymores, and doesn't know what to do. The other platoon attacks the Vietnamese forces, and the explosions wake up Texas troops. When the combat begins, Taylor is unable to activate his claymore, because the safety is turned off. Gardner gets killed in the encounter, while Tex and Taylor are only slightly hurt. Junior then accuses Taylor of sleeping during his shift, but the latter denies it. Barnes gathers the platoon after ministering to the wounded, and warns them of the dangers of combat. Taylor is given a warning for sleeping during his shift. He returns to camp a few days later, injured. King and Crawford greet him as the three work on toilet duty by O'Neill's orders. The three protest, that the sergeants take advantage of the recruits by assigning them minor chores. Once they conclude their duty, King invites Taylor to their usual place, the underground. Taylor meets numerous familiar soldiers, including Elias. He bonds with the circle of potheads, while remaining distant from Barnes and his followers. The platoon goes on patrol a few months later, on New Year's Day. Taylor moves ahead warily, while Barnes follows close behind, and comes to a halt when he notices something in the bushes. They come across an abandoned bunker, erected by Vietnamese troops. Elias enters the bunker, as the platoon disperses to inspect the area. Wolf then directs Taylor and Washington to further scout the area. Inside, Elias spots an escaping opponent, and shoots him on the spot. Another two troops discover a map of the area, with noted spots in a tiny camp. They pick it up, because they see how valuable it will be to them. Sadly, it's a trap, and they are blown up. Elias hurries back up after hearing the huge explosion. As a result of the encounter, he informs Wolf that the area is riddled with traps. In order to continue the mission, they will need the engineers to deactivate the traps. Wolf is also informed that the enemies have been detected in a village along the river. The battalion departs, but a soldier named Washington is nowhere to be seen. As a result, Elias stays with four men to await the engineers, while searching for Washington. The battalion soon discovers Washington dead and tied to a tree near the river. Barnes is furious at this, and enters the village, where he believes the enemies are. He spots a Vietnamese villager trying to flee the village, and mercilessly shoots him. The squad breaks into the houses, discovers various weapons, and causes mayhem throughout the community. In the meantime, Taylor spots two peasants who are sheltering in a home. He threatens to come out, but Francis calms him down. O'Neill and Bunny arrive on the scene. They see Taylor shoot at the ground as he confronts the locals, but they ultimately stop. Bunny calls him a coward, and bludgeons the innocent people to death with his weapon. Barnes eventually locates and interrogates the village chief. He inquires about the weapons, which Lerner translates into Vietnamese, and tells him that the village chief had no choice, and had to cooperate with Vietnamese soldiers, as they killed innocent people, and threatened to massacre the entire village if they did not stay on their side. Barnes does not believe his excuse, and the rest of his soldiers begin to gang up on the chief. The chief's wife attempts to intervene, but Barnes viciously murders her as well. 
he then threatens to kill the chief's daughter if he does not cooperate in locating the enemy. Following that, Elias comes into the village, and discovers the extensive devastation caused by Barnes, revealing his aggressive character. He charges at him, and the two start fighting. Wolf steps in to stop them, and informs them that he has received instructions from the captain to burn the village and destroy the weapons. Elias then asks Wolf why he didn't stop Barnes, but he dodges the topic altogether. The soldiers follow the lieutenant's orders, and burn everything in the settlement, destroy the weapons, and take the residents with them. Later at the camp, Wolf and Elias meet with the captain, where Elias plans to submit an illegal killing complaint. If an event is proven, the captain notifies them that a court-martial will be held. The unit is now divided, due to the conflict between the two sergeants. Elias and Taylor stare at the stars at night, while they discuss the prior incident in depth. They stand there peacefully watching the night sky. The platoon is dispatched back to the bunker the next day, to further inspect the area. A few moments later, the attackers ambush them, and the area is embroiled in a violent conflict. Elias meets with Wolf and Barnes, to discuss his plan for attacking the adversary from the side. Barnes disagrees before leaving. Meanwhile, Taylor tries to save Lerner, who was injured in the firefight, and bring him to dock. At the same moment, Wolf requests an airstrike, but enters the incorrect coordinates, hurting one of their soldiers, and infuriating Barnes. Elias then encounters Taylor, and brings him along with Crawford and Ra. The party flees to a position where they can halt the invaders' advance. Elias travels to the river alone, flanking the enemy from behind. Barnes offers to Wolf that everyone retreat with the platoon, while he searches for Elias. At the same moment, Taylor and the others battle the approaching enemy. They effectively vanquish their adversaries, forcing them to flee. Crawford, on the other hand, is shot in the lung, but survives. Barnes eventually locates the three guys, and tells them to return to the platoon. He assures Taylor that Elias is still fighting somewhere, and Taylor assures him that he will find him. When Barnes searches for Elias, he fights the remaining adversaries. Elias manages to overpower them after a few encounters. He bumps into Barnes as he prepares to return to his squad. He is relieved to see him, but Barnes disappoints him by shooting him. Meanwhile, Taylor becomes concerned, and returns to the bush in search of Elias. He runs into Barnes, informing him that Elias is no longer alive. Taylor suspects him and returns to the platoon. He notices Elias on the field, injured and fleeing the enemies, while the men are evacuated by helicopter. They try to save Elias, but it's too late, all they can do is watch him die. Taylor informs everyone at the underground camp that Barnes murdered Elias. Ra and the others are doubtful of his claim, and advise them not to attack Barnes. Everyone knows he is stronger than all of them. Barnes walks in and overhears their chat. He educates them on what it takes to keep a military machine running properly. He then challenges everyone to murder him, but no one reacts. Taylor attacks Barnes from behind as he is preparing to leave. Barnes overwhelms him, and draws a knife, preparing to kill him. Ra intervenes and convinces him that killing a fellow soldier is not worth it. Barnes hesitates, before cutting Taylor's cheek and leaving the scene. The squad soon returns to the area where Elias was shot. They believe an enemy division is nearby, and are bracing for the worst. While Taylor and King discuss the differences between Elias and Barnes, the men prepare their foxholes. O'Neill comes and instructs King to board the aircraft, and leave the battlefield, leaving Taylor behind. Later that night, enemy forces creep up to the platoon's perimeter. Francis is watching for adversaries in Taylor's foxhole. Ra appears unexpectedly, and notifies them of the dangerous situation in which the enemies have surrounded the battalion. Later, he informs of an impending airstrike. A wounded soldier then approaches Taylor's foxhole, and informs him that the attackers are many. Francis advises Taylor to leave, but the latter insists on remaining. They eventually come across the adversaries. They fight them bravely, shooting and triggering claymores. The fighting abruptly comes to a halt, and they hear a whistle from the enemy's side. Taylor hurriedly orders Francis to exit the foxhole, and they manage to flee before the RPG arrives. The chaotic encounter will inevitably separate the two. Junior and Bunny are protecting their foxholes. Rabbit taunts the enemies by firing at them. When he sees their overwhelming numbers, Junior flees the combat. He accidentally bumps into a tree out of panic and becomes unconscious. With only Bunny, he is outnumbered and promptly murdered. Junior, unfortunately, suffers the same fate. O'Neill resolves to hide behind enemy corpses until the battle is over to save himself. And Wolf's squad is eventually besieged by the enemies, which kills him. Because of the tragedy of the deceased soldiers, the captain decides to launch an airstrike on the battlefield, to put an end to it all. 
Barnes kills the enemies in hand-to-hand -hand combat at the same moment. Taylor tracks Barnes down to inform him about the airstrike, but he is too consumed by his bloodlust, even attempting to assassinate Taylor. The airstrike suddenly bombs the battlefield, knocking the two unconscious. The next morning, Taylor wakes up injured, and stumbles around his surroundings. He discovers an enemy assault rifle, and observes Barnes pulling himself away. As he sees Taylor with a gun, the latter requests to die instead. Taylor shoots Barnes, and leaves him to die without hesitation. Soon, the rescue crew locates Taylor, and transports him to the injured area. When he sees Francis, he tells him they're both going home. Re bids them farewell as they are transported by Chopper. Taylor notices numerous bodies scattered throughout the field. The young soldier sobs, as he realizes the brutality of the Vietnam War, which will haunt him for the rest of his life. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.